Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining us. It's two o'clock here on the East Coast. I'm just gonna give everyone um, a couple moments to open the GoToWebinar platform. I know it takes a second to download, open, press play and everything, but thanks so much for joining us. I'm personally so excited to have Sandy um, here with us. She's been working with one of our clients, um, Adventure Consults in Uganda and Rwanda for quite some time now. So I'm interested in learning about traveling um, in Uganda right now, and obviously you guys are too. I was lucky enough to travel to Kenya, um, so still Eastern Africa, um, last month for my honeymoon. Um, so I definitely have the, the travel bug. I absolutely can't wait to get back to um, the continent. So Sandy, we're so excited to um, have you here. But just a couple more seconds, um, everyone sit tight and uh, we'll start the webinar. I just wanna make sure everyone gets it up and loaded. So sit tight. My goodness, I'm seeing so many familiar names come through. Um, I'm not gonna waste any time. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, hello again, everyone. My name's Jesse. I work for Emerging Destinations. We represent cool companies and cool places. Uh, with me, I have uh, the first time we've seen each other since Christmas. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm sure you know uh, Jane Barrand, um, owner of Emerging Des owner and founder of Emerging Destinations. So um, we're very happy to be back in the office talking travel again, um, and having our good friend Sandy join us. Uh, before I hand everything over to Sandy, I just wanted to refresh your memory. Hopefully this isn't the first time you're joining an Emerging Destinations webinar. Um, just wanted to give you a quick recap of our portfolio. So um, in Eastern Africa, we've got Kelly and Peacock Safaris, the Elowana Collection, and Sky Safari, all in Kenya and Tanzania, um, as well as Sopa Lodges. Then we've got Anantara in Southern Africa, so that's Zambia and Mozambique. Eco training in South Africa, and you'll hear a lot more about Adventure Consults today, um, focusing on Uganda from Sandy. Um, in South America, we've got Las Torres uh, Reserve in Patagonia, Cruz Andino in the Lake District of Patagonia, Jungle Experiences on the Peruvian Amazon, um, Grand Hotel Lux in um, Argentina and Uruguay, Terra Nova, Costa Rica, and then the Guyana Tourism Authority in Guyana. Lastly, our, pol our polar portfolio consists of Iceland Pro Travel and Iceland Pro Cruises, um, as well as Adventure Canada. So it's quite the portfolio, we're all over the place. Um, if you're looking to dive into any of these destinations a little bit deeper, head over to the Emerging Destinations homepage and um, click on our webinar tab. Um, I know everyone is, um, had their fair share of webinars, but we have a really, really great library that goes deeper into um, our clients, so head over there. Um, also, if you need anything at all, my um, email is just jesse at emergingdestinations.com, so if you'd like digital material, um, a personal webinar for you and your team, anything at all, just feel free to email me. A few housekeeping notes. Um, we've got Sandy on here for a while, and I personally have not been to Uganda um, post-lockdown, so please ask questions. Type those through on the GoToWebinar control panel, and I'll make sure Sandy sticks around so she can answer those um, at the end of the webinar. Um, also, this webinar is being recorded, so if you need to take a call or leave early, don't worry. Um, I am recording, and I will send you that um, probably by the end of the week. Um, it'll be up on our YouTube channel as well as our um, Emerging Destinations home play, homepage. So please type your questions through. Um, please sit back and relax. I'm gonna hand everything over to Sandy, um, who's gonna be taking us through traveling in Uganda post uh, COVID. <laughs> Off to you, Sandy. Oh, great. Thanks for having me. I did show my screen. Is it showing it? We're good, we're good to go. No, I can go there. Okay, so uh, thanks so much, Jesse, for having me. I Just for those of you that don't know me, I'm Sandy from Hills of Africa Travel. We are based here in the United States in sh near Charlotte, North Carolina, and I am ex-Zimbabwean and very fortunately was able to go back and visit Zimbabwe after our Uganda trip. But I wanted to share all about Uganda and our trip. We... So this Uganda trip was a um, experiential trip 
for travel agents or travel advisors. And I had 18 travel advisors join me in November. Actually, yeah, early November, um, which was a little bit hectic because, you know, Uganda only opened 1st of October and some people didn't have flights. Some of our flights all got changed. It was crazy, crazy town. And I have to tell you that Adventure Consults and my travel advisors that traveled with us, we all went with open hearts, open minds. And I think that's the way we all have to travel now. Some of us had long layovers. Some of us had very few layovers, um, but open mind, open heart is definitely where we all need to be when traveling. So I'm gonna just share with you what we did on our 16 days in Uganda. Um, some of us had to go a little bit early because of my Delta flights, for example, got canceled, so I had to go in early. So typically we would only do one or two nights in the Entebbe area, but we actually stayed three, some people stayed four. So just to give you a little bit of an outline on what is required to enter Uganda. And I know that in some instances going through Amsterdam has changed. So what I have here might have changed in terms of Amsterdam, but as far as Uganda is correct as of today. So we had to have a negative PCR COVID test, which had to be issued within 72 hours of arrival into Entebbe Airport. Um, some of us got three COVID tests, one to actually get into Amsterdam, one just in case, and one to make sure that we were within the 72 hour timeline. You know, some of our COVID testing took 48 hours, some people's only took one hour. So um, just be aware of that. As far as masks um, and sanitizing, masks must be worn in all government buildings, um, local communities, national parks, uh, going and checking into hotels, that kind of thing. Also now, and it has been talked about for a long time by Dr. Gladys of the Gorilla um, Conservation Foundation, uh, masks are now have to be worn around chimps and gorillas at all times. And when, we'll talk more about that when we get to the gorilla and chimp area. Um, I couldn't be prouder of Uganda and the way they've handled everything to do with COVID regulations and protocols. They have been top notch, absolutely outstanding. Um, from arrival into Entebbe Airport to going to hotels, to driving through the communities in the middle of absolute nowhere, uh, to entering national parks, to meeting conservationists, you name it. The protocols have been efficient, organized, and very, very well done. So some of the things that, were, that would happen is obviously you needed to wear your mask. Um, you had to use hand sanitizer everywhere. Your temperature was taken and you had to hand wash at every opportunity. So those are all done extremely, extremely well. Uh, literally just before we departed to go to Uganda, uh, Uganda initiated a protocol that had a negative test had to be taken on depart prior to departure from Uganda. So again, we had to jump through some hoops, but it is easily done. So. Um, those are just the regulations and the protocols. Feel free to ask any questions or reach out to Jesse and myself if you need anything. Um, so our first couple of nights was spent at hotel number five, which is in a beautiful sort of little um, neighborhood district of Entebbe. It's only about 10 minutes from the Entebbe airport. And with using Adventure Consults, which is one of Emerging Destinations clients, Brian and his team, absolutely phenomenal. We had um, VIP assistance, literally as we got off the aircraft and were walking along the tarmac, escorted us to the front of the line, helped us through immigration. We had to fill in like three or four different forms for arrival into uh, Entebbe. So it was phenomenal. Hotel number five, cute little boutique hotel, and we absolutely loved it here. The food was phenomenal. 
lovely little swimming pool that we could all dip into and the rooms were really really gorgeous uh, you know most of us have clients that kind of want to get in and out but actually in Tebi had some really great activities the one day we went off to Mabamba Swamp in a um, dugout canoe which was fantastic if you are doing this activity for clients there are two ways to do it go right down um, into Entebbe to the dock and take a boat all the way out to Mabamba, which is so much quicker. It's about an hour to get there and then you're right in Mabamba. Or you could take the road, transfer around and then take the little boat out to Mabamba. I don't recommend that. It's about two and a half hour to get to Mabamba. So think about that in terms of your clients. But there we got to see this very, very rare stalk. So, I mean, incredible that we got to see it. Apparently there are only 12 in the Bumbumba swamp right now. So absolutely incredible that we got to see it. Uh, sorry. Uh, this is the boat that we took out actually. <laughs> I loved it, so cute. And we had, the Mabamba swamp by the way, is a community driven project. The community looks after Mabamba Swamp. They're very protective of the stalks there and um, take all the fees associated with going into Mabamba Swamp. So if you're thinking about uh, your clients in terms of conservation, then this is a really good activity that not only looks after the community, but teaches the community about the importance of the birds and the swamp and therefore more tourists coming in to see them and providing more of a living. Some of our crew also did bike riding around in Tebi, uh, which was a fantastic half day experience. Some of them went shopping. There was three or four agents on our trip that absolutely loved shopping. So we did a lot of shopping experiences for them. Okay, so after three nights, we took the very long drive <laughs> from in Tebi to Murchison Falls. The big bonus is that the new road from Entebbe, the highway, through to Kampala is now finished. So that is phenomenal news. What used to take an hour and a half now doesn't take very long at all. Um, the drive normally from Entebbe up to Murchison is about eight hours. Ours took about 12 hours, and that's because we went during rainy season. So they had had phenomenal rains, absolutely beautiful for the landscape and the animals and everything else. Uh, but driving conditions on those very on those roads up in Murchison Falls was hectic, absolutely hectic. Uh, it, the, a lot of the trucks coming in from Congo are using those roads, so very very bumpy. Took a long long time, but absolutely worth it. We stopped off at Zewa Rhino Sanctuary on the way. So we got to see, we got split into two different groups. We were the first people, first international tourists up at Zewa. I was very, very proud of our travel advisors. Um, we gave heavily in terms of donations to the Zewa Rhino Sanctuary, and they had just had a baby born um, a few days prior to us arriving. But a phenomenal afternoon out if your clients are considering it i think it's a great stop you also get to have lunch at the nearby um, safari lodge so a great stop and you get to be up close with the rhinos which i absolutely loved um, so one of the things we had to change and one of the things we had to be open about was obviously the water levels in murchison falls had ridden, risen so much that Baker's Lodge, which is where we were due to be staying, was completely submerged underwater. Um, the, the river had risen over seven meters, the Murchison Falls area. Um, the river, Nile River was over seven meters higher than it was the same time in 2019. So unfortunately, we were no longer staying at uh, Baker's Lodge, and now we were at Para Safari Lodge, which has its bonus. It's right inside the Murchison National Park, so it's very easy to get to the game viewing. 
we had absolutely phenomenal game viewing. In one instance, we saw 50 giraffe in one setting. It was absolutely incredible. We saw um, we saw lots and lots of lion. We saw leopard, um, lots of buffalo. Very, very good sightings. Lions on every day that we were there. We also took a trip up to Murchison Falls. As I said, the river is so high, we were hoping to climb up to the top and see the falls from the top, but it's just too, too treacherous. So maybe when your clients can go, it won't be quite as dangerous and treacherous, but we had a phenomenal day out there. I highly recommend using the smaller boats. We took the smaller boats up there and you can get very close to the bank. So get to see a lot of birds and game. Um, but yeah, absolutely. I love, I've done a lot of safaris in my life and I thought the game viewing in Murchison Falls was outstanding. Some of the best I have experienced. And that has to do with adventure consults and their guides who were outstanding. Eric, Robert and Richard and John. We had four guides, four vehicles for the 19 of us. So it was absolutely outstanding. I highly, highly recommend the guides. Some of the experiences that African uh, consults organized for us were, you know, surprise cocktails uh, uh, along the river. We had surprise cocktails one evening inside the national park. They had to get proper permits and special permits to organize it, but they really wanted to show off Uganda and wow, did they do a good job. So just a huge kudos out to them. Think about when you're, when you're booking a trip for your clients, how you want them to experience it. And I personally think surprises are a really good way to do it. Uh, from Murchison, we took the charter flight to Kasesi. Otherwise, our guides had to leave us behind because they were meeting us in Kasesi off the charter flight. They left the day before. It took them 12 hours. Now, I know some people do this, Murchison Falls to Kasesi, which is where we do the chimp trekking. They do do this um, drive. It is a very, very long and tedious drive. So I would consider if you're thinking, you know, maybe it's about $450 extra per person to add the charter flight, but for an hour's flight, well worth it. You don't have to do that drive yet again. Then there are a number of lodges in the Kabali region. Kasesi is about 45 minutes from um, Fort Portal, which is where we stayed. And we stayed at the lovely, lovely Indali Lodge. I absolutely love it here. Gorgeous property owned um, by a family and there's so much history to it. So I'm just gonna show you a few pictures of Indali Lodge. That's, that's just the main area. And you have your breakfast and lunch and dinner in there. It's gorgeous. Um, I love this view, absolutely gorgeous view and typical English owners, um, tea with afternoon cocktails. Uh, so COVID regulations for chimpanzee trekking, again, masks must be worn 100% of the time. Um, hand washing stations on arrival, you are you asked to use hand sanitizers, you're not allowed within 10 feet of the chimps. Now we all know chimps and gorillas, they don't understand um, that you have to have social distancing. So they might come close to you, but you're not, you are not allowed to make your way closer to them. We had phenomenal chimp sightings in Kibali. Um, most of our clients, most of our travel advisors wished we had spent an extra night at Indali Lodge, not only because it was so gorgeous, but because the chimps move fast, very, very fast. So spending an hour with them, you're on the move the whole time, and it would, would have been nice to have a second day. Or you could do the chimpanzee um, habituation experience where you get to spend four to five hours with them. So that's another op option for you. Uh, just the views at Indali, which I couldn't get enough of all of these ones. So many amazing opportunities to interact with the locals. Um, this is the drive from Fort Portal to Queen Elizabeth. Uh, not too bad, probably took us about an hour and a half through the National Park, Queen Elizabeth National Park. We stayed at Mwea Lodge, which does have 
phenomenal, phenomenal views. Um, again, Adventure Consults organized surprise cocktails. We had a fabulous time with Adventure Consults. Uh, that's our group, all our travel advisors. And it was just so fun traveling with everyone. We made friends, friends to last a lifetime. Um, highly recommend it. So where we did the, the Kazinga Channel, the birding, I actually have to say that Kazinga Channel um, shone for me. We got to see um, a elephant charge a buffalo. We got to see lots of elephants, lots of buffalo. The bird life was phenomenal. Um, it was just incredible. We also saw a lot of elephants inside the park. And the one day we actually did lion research. So we paid the um, $120, I think it is per person, to actually spend time with a lion researcher. James was his name. And it was so phenomenal learning about lion research, but also learning about his role in um, human wildlife conflict and what he goes through to help the communities, but also help the animals of Queen Elizabeth National Park. Very well worth it for our time of year. The, the grass was about a meter high, so it was very would have been very difficult to find lion on our own. And bonus was that we got to see um, a collared leopard as well. So from, from Queen Elizabeth up to Shasha, um, it was probably about a four hour drive. Again, rivers, water levels extremely high so very very muddy roads um, quite difficult conditions in terms of driving but we had the best guides best drivers in the world and they made it seem so efficient and so easy i'm sure they were pulling their their nails out but they would they did a phenomenal job ishasha wilderness camp highly recommend it right on the banks of the ashasha river and a beautiful gorgeous traditional african safari tented camp so i love i absolutely love this property only only stayed one night here um, eric and his team eric robert uh, john and richard managed to find the famous tree climbing lions of ashasha so we were very very lucky with that um, Again, we got spoilt with our sundowners. It is uh, quite something. Um, there's our lion, uh, our leopard, beg your pardon, which we got to see with the researcher. One thing that I encourage everybody to do is get, a, get involved in conservation. I am all about conservation. I highly recommend it. And Eric, the head guide for Adventure Consults is absolutely phenomenal guide he everywhere you go they are like eric 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 everyone loves eric everyone knows eric um, but he also knows all about conservation he's involved with the giraffe conservation he's involved with um, james and his team in queen elizabeth national park um, he works with all the conservationists and I'll share one further tip a little bit later. But Deo is based at Ashasha, and he is a community leader. So they live in the Ashasha region, and they're continually getting taken out by elephants and baboons and lions, et cetera, coming into the community. So he built this trench, two meters deep, two meters wide, to stop the elephants and the baboons and the lions coming into the community. Uh, it, two meters wide, two meters deep by two kilometers, two kilometers took six years, but the Uganda Wildlife Authority found out about this amazing uh, Deo and the trench and the fact that they were um, stopping the elephants coming in and Uganda Wildlife built an extra 23 kilometers around the Ashasha region. So get involved, we're changing lives when you do that. It's just sanitizing. I just wanted to show you this for the sanitizing techniques that are being used, even in the community regions in the middle of nowhere. Uh, our last stop, of course, the Big Wow, um, which is in Windy. We stayed at Bahoma Lodge and a gorgeous property here. This is their room. It's right, um, it's the last 
second last property before you actually in the national park and it is on the other side of the road so it's not like windy lodge inside the, with right inside the park but they do often have the gorillas coming up into this area sanctuary is the very next door property but i loved bahoma lodge right up in the trees and just gorgeous and the team there phenomenal okay so from bahoma you can actually walk it's like a three minute walk to the bundy headquarters um, again hand sanitizers you have to stand in buckets you have to sanitize your feet as well as your hands and as i said um gorilla uh sorry beg you pardon you have to have to have to wear your masks in fact we met with dr gladys of the gorilla conservation um company and she very kindly came to get, give us all a talk on conservation as well as her um center for public health Conservation through public health is her, is her business, and she is teaching the community about the valuable benefits of tourism, as well as looking after the gorillas and getting involved with conservation and looking after the community. But she has now initiated for all gorilla and all chimpanzee treks, even after COVID, to have mandatory um, masks. So I think that's a great initiative by her. We did two gorilla treks. Highly recommend doing two gorilla treks with your clients. We saw two different groups. The um, can't remember the exact um, groups we saw. Um, Rukungira was one, and I can't remember the other one. Um, anyway, we saw a seven-day-old baby gorilla. I nearly bawled my eyes out when I saw this little baby gorilla. And um, one of our agents. Lou Borrego, who um, owns Frissy Travels, he actually had a little sort of two and a half year old gorilla come and want to play tag with him, grabbed him by the by the knee and tried to pull him towards him. Just phenomenal experiences and the gorilla experiences one hour when you find the gorillas to when you leave the gorillas. So I love two hours with the gorillas. I could spend all day with them. Um, but phenomenal, phenomenal experience. So they're two different kind of experiences. We One group, um, we split 18. There are only eight people allowed in each gorilla trekking group. So we had three different groups. And we actually paid for our guides to go gorilla trekking. We thought it was important for the guides to experience it again. They obviously, we were, for adventure consults, we were their first um, international tourists to go with some of the guides. Eric had been on a trip already, but we were the first international tourists since February. So some of the experiences we did, first international tourists. I mean, for our guides to go out and experience it again and for them to see the gorillas, I think it was hugely, hugely important. So, that is me, Jesse. I know I winged through that so fast. Uh, my heart and mind is still with Uganda. Had an absolutely phenomenal time. I then went off to Kenya. I was supposed to go back to Zimbabwe and see my family immediately for seven days. And um, sadly, that all kind of got changed. I did manage to go to Zimbabwe, but the bonus was that I got to go to Kenya and I got to go to Amboseli and see the gorgeous, gorgeous Elawana Tortillas camp with Jane. So I got I to spend know. two, that two was amazing. days with Jane. It's um, funny how the, the, the travel world can collide. Yeah, that was really fun. And, um, you know, I, I did things and I said things like, oh, I want a picture of an elephant with Killy behind it. And boom, it happened. <laughs> oh, I want one with a ostrich behind it. Boom, it happened. <laughs> it was great fun. We had a phenomenal time, absolutely. And as Jane said, I mean, the universe delivered. We got every single experience we wanted was like, check, check. It was just incredible. So very fortunate. I got to go to Uganda for 16 days. I was in Kenya in the end for six days and I was in Zimbabwe for three days. Um, feel free to ask any questions about travel, how 
efficient Africa is, because I think they can definitely tick that box on having made sure that the experiences as well as the safety and protocols are very well, very well done. 100%. And I'll just uh, piggyback off of you, Sandy. Um, so we, we went over a little bit of Uganda uh, protocols and stuff like that. And I do have lots of questions for you, but just for everyone that's still on right now, um, Jane and I are actually doing a Kenya discussion. Um, I think it's G next week um, that we'll be doing it. Just really informal, um, updated protocols, um, regulations, and honestly, just the experience that we had. You know, I think a lot of people of course, the COVID regulations and everything are, are important, but I mean, just the unmatched experiences, like I've been on safari probably not as many times as you, Sandy, but um, this past uh, December, I had one of the, the best um, safari and just game viewing and just experience. I think everyone needs it just for their soul, um, in my humble opinion. But let's get to some questions. I know that um, we've been on here for about 30 minutes, so I wanna get to some good ones. Um, Sandy, um, everyone was wearing masks, obviously. Is there a certain type of mask that's required? I know a lot of the airlines, when I was personally traveling um, over to Kenya, it had to be a, a surgical mask. So whether you're guerrilla trekking or in the government buildings that you mentioned, are you aware of the certain type of mask you have to have? Yeah, so, um, you know, obviously just generally traveling around, you can wear one of your gorgeous masks. Um, but when you are on the airline, on the charter flights, so Aerolink was our charter company, um, mm -hmm. we had to wear a blue N95 mask. Um, okay. When we did Gorilla Treks, you actually walked up with um, your blue mask. Then when you got within distance, you had to change your mask and a brand new clean mask had to be put on when wow. you went to Gorillas and Chimps. So You'll be told this by your guides, but you do need to prepare. I I personally took 400 masks and I got the other agents to also bring masks. Yes, we probably had way too many, but it's going to be organized. Um, when you're in the vehicles with your guides, you don't have to wear the mask. Our guides did wear masks the entire time, but us, we didn't always wear them. When we went through communities, we always wore a mask. Um, yeah. and it was funny, some of them would be saying, where's your mask? Where's your mask? And we were like, oops, forgot to put it on. And you <laughs> put it on. Um, yeah. And that was in our vehicle with the windows closed. So, you know, they are very strict about it themselves. Sure. Uh, chimpanzees, again, when you're going in and out of all national parks, you have to wear your blue mask. Um, if you have your other mask on, your pretty mask on on top, that's fine. But the blue mask has to be underneath. Yeah, um, and the it's amazing how susceptible primates are to the diseases that we carry. So um, I actually didn't know that about the fresh uh, mask changing. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, I did actually hear from Dr. Gladys this week that they found out that at the San Diego Zoo that the gorilla there um, is susceptible to COVID. They did do a test and he got COVID. So we need to protect these animals. We're going into their environment. Let's all follow the rules. It's fun. Let's go follow the rules so that we can protect them for future generations. Exactly, 100%. Um, so a lot of people were commenting on these beautiful photos throughout your presentation. Are these all from the, the photos in your presentation? Were they from the FAM? All the wildlife sightings and everything? Absolutely, 100%. We had wow. phenomenal, phenomenal game viewing. I mean, there's a picture of Tessa Tatenko, um, um, for, with travels with Tessa and myself, just us in the bottom, and then 50 giraffe in the background. Yeah. I mean, just phenomenal game viewing, absolutely phenomenal game viewing. Amazing, amazing. Um, here's a good question. Um, so on your pictures of gorilla trekking, um, people are quite um, geared up, aside from masks. Um, do you have to bring all of this gear uh, when you travel to Uganda, I know that a lot of lodges uh, will provide some stuff. Can you elaborate on your um, equipment um, that's provided slash not provided? Okay, perfect. So, I mean, we would give you a packing guide of what to take. Um, I personally took gaiters and I took my own gloves and I just used my old gardening gloves. I didn't go out and buy new gloves, gardening gloves. 
take them with you. I donated them to my to the lodge we stayed at. Bahoma Lodge does give you gaiters. They also give you gloves, and they also give you a backpack if you want to borrow one of their backpacks. Um, they also and give you, they give you a, a walking stick as well. So uh, my walking stick was my porter, and he dragged me up and he pulled me down again. Um, he was absolutely phenomenal. Another thing about porters, please, please, please encourage your clients to use a porter. It's $20 for the porter, and that's their job. The more porters we can get going up the mountain, the better, because we teach them about gorilla conservation and how important gorillas are to the community. If you think about Bwindi itself, it is all about gorillas, and so everybody in that community is um, in the tourism world. Please use a porter. Yeah, it's definitely, um, you know, I'm glad you explained that because, you know, that's their job for the day. And although, you know, I only had a camera and a water bottle, and I was like, oh, no, no, I, I don't need a porter. But, you know, and uh, he actually <laughs> saved my butt a few times from... Yes, definitely. <laughs> It's amazing, they come out of nowhere and just gra um, grab, uh, save you. So anyway, yep, highly, highly recommend. Um, let's see, uh, you may have mentioned this before, how long was your time in Uganda? Is there a certain, um, you know, everyone know, is familiar of these familiarization trips, but do you have a recommendation? How long was your time and how long do you recommend? Let's leave it at that. We did, we did 16 days. Um, I know fam trips, I, I call ours an experience trip because we stay in one property in each destination. Mm -hmm. We really want to get to know the area. Um, so I'm not showing them all the different properties, but we want them to see the area because in the end, that's what our clients are going to be experiencing. So ours was 16 days and um, yeah, it was, it was great. Yeah. You definitely, it depends on what you want to see there. Gorillas, chimps, Murchison, Queen Elizabeth, it's the, it's the, it's, it's end, the, the opportunities are endless. So, you know, you can stay a month and not see everything. Um, let's get on to some technical um, questions. We have some questions about visas and permits, but can you elaborate on visa um, for Uganda right now? Visas for the for US? Correct. It's, it's actually very, very easy. It is $50 on arrival to get your Uganda visa. And I don't recommend getting it in advance. I got mine in advance and I arrived there and they had no recollection of what it was. I was actually going to Kenya afterwards and then Zimbabwe. So I needed to get mine um, in advance. Um, however, don't do it. <laughs> Rather <laughs> just do it on arrival. And yeah. um, it's, it's much, much easier to do. So uh, guerrilla permits, they are seven hundred dollars um, currently, and that is for an hour. And then um, chimpanzee permits are a hundred and twenty dollars. Got it. And that's per person. Correct. And per trek. Per trek, uh, gorilla yep. trek and chimpanzee treks um, are one hour from the time you meet the yeah yeah time you meet up. Yeah, um, that's a great lead-in question. There's, um, I certainly can uh, attest to this. How long does it take you to find um, the gorillas? Um, my experience in Uganda was a much longer than mine um, in Rwanda, but if you have any um, input on that, Sandy. Uh, okay, so <laughs> we, had, we had four groups going out, as I said. Um, we had a couple on you know one of the agents brought her husband and um they hadn't really done much trekking and um eric was like that we well we whatever we thought we had found the 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 group that was closest to the main area and they certainly were the night before they <laughs> would have it would have taken them half an hour to find the gorillas well, the next day we all go off starting and this poor group that was supposed to be closest and have the easiest climb, that it was the Habanyanja group. They got into a fight with another group because <laughs> the silverback was trying to steal the females and they traveled forever. So what should have been a 30 minutes for them 
I mean, they took, that was an eight hour day for them yeah. of, of finding. Our climb was, um, obviously we'd had a lot of rain. Our climb was very, very, very hard. Um, literally up a mountain like this and climbing on very slippery uh, leaves. There was no path. It was literally very slippery. The guys had the machete out there and were just chopping their way through the environment. Ours wasn't long at all. It was probably about an hour and a half to find the gorillas. Um, the group that had to travel to go and find the gorillas, they had the easiest one. And it was very, you know, through tea plantations. And it was about a two hour trick. I'm not going to say climb because it wasn't a climb. It was a trick. <laughs> they had an easy one um, to find them. So the very next day we went to the Habanyanja group which was um, the one with the baby that was seven days old. It was up a really organized path. Yes, it was steep right up that windy mountain in front of you where your lodges are, but it, it was about an hour. Yeah, it, they're wild animals, you know, you can't control it. Um, but yeah, it, it, it varies from, from family to family um, how you get to them. Sandy, oh my God, I can't even explain to you how many questions I'm getting right now. I think I'll take one or two more and then everyone that I haven't answered will answer you directly. I'll put these in like an Excel file um, so I can answer all of your questions. But um, I want to get to, um, let's see. Oh my gosh, there's so many. General, okay, uh, arranging for uh, porters. How do you, how do you go about um, arranging um, for porters? Okay, so you can't do it in advance. The client needs to take the $20 with them. Um, $20 is kind of the stipulated amount. If you want to pay, if your clients want to pay $10 extra, yes, thank you very much to the porters. But they are waiting for you at the area where you get your tracker and your ranger. So when you go for a gorilla trick, you get your main ranger, and then you have a Uganda Wildlife Authority tracker who has a gun that goes with you as well. That's where the porters all are. And you just say, oh, yes, please, I want a porter. Um, yeah. Definitely do it. Please, please, please. Yeah, very, very simple. Um, we have some people wondering how to book with Adventure Consults. That's great. So thank you, um, Sandy. Uh, you Sandy. And of course, you can book through Sandy, which is the whole reason for this <laughs> webinar. Um, and then let's take this last question. Um, the best way to connect Kenya to Uganda, you did it. Can you um, can you uh, elaborate on that? Absolutely, very easy. Um, Aerolink offers a solution. You can you can fly on Aerolink from Entebbe into uh, Kenya into Nairobi, or there is Air Kenya, which is what I did. Perfect, easy enough. Um, well, if you, uh, everyone attending the webinar today, if you don't have someone booking uh, Uganda and Rwanda, you're looking at her. Um, Sandy does the, the whole continent, um, but we're really happy to have her um, a longtime supporter of um, one of our very cool clients and um, someone very, very near and dear to our hearts. So Sandy, you're going to have some work to do in the next um, day or two. The amount of questions it's it's amazing but um let me send all those um to you sandy and i can probably answer a few as well but um i like to keep these g um to 30 40 minutes and i've gone over just a tad um this webinar was recorded if you joined late don't worry i've recorded the whole thing from um, start to finish so i'll be sending you a recap with the recording um as well as the q a from the entire um session as well but sandy thanks so much um i can't thank you enough i really appreciate it we hope to get as many people to um uganda and east africa in general um very very soon thank you so much sandy you're welcome had fun thanks jesse bye everyone lots of questions huh